So I've got a circle here, okay? I don't need point B. Instead, I'm gonna place four points here randomly on the object, okay? Or randomly on the circle. They're not spaced in any particular way. And then I'm going to connect them Okay, and then I'm going to move them around. So what do I have? I have a quadrilateral that is inscribed in a circle. So a quadrilateral that is inscribed in a circle. Okay, is a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. Okay, so now let's measure the angles here because there's something interesting about quadrilaterals that are inscribed in a circle. And we'll just go around and measure all of these angles real quick. And then we'll see what the interesting thing is and then we'll talk about proving that. So here we go. All right, so what we have, oh, let me, let me try moving these labels make sure they're all moved outside clearly so we can see them. Now first thing I want you to notice is it doesn't matter if I change the size or the location of the circle. So let me get back uh, where was point B. I can change the size and you'll notice that the angles don't change. Right? The angles are not tied to the radius of the circle. Even if the, ra the radius changes it won't matter. And I can change the location of the circle too and that won't impact it. So the only thing that impacts the um, measure of these angles are the vertices themselves. Okay, I'll take that off and I want you to notice what happens as I change these. The opposite side doesn't change. The angle on the opposite side doesn't change and neither does the angle you know F. F and D are the ones staying the same. But as I adjust point F around the circle, what changes is C and E, the measure of angles C and E. But what I want you to notice is that they always add up to 180 degrees. So let me put this over here, see if I can get this right to 100 or very close. That's pretty close to 100. In fact, it's three uh, hundredths of a percent off and this one is close to 80. It's 300 percent, three hundredths of a percent over. So together they add up to 180 and that's kind of what we notice here is that if you add this number to that number it'll always equal 180. Also these two numbers are always equaling 180. What happens if we adjust this here? Well they'll still always equal 180. So this here is a theorem right that says basically that the opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary or that they always equal 180. Okay so now let's try to figure out how we could prove that and to do that I think I'm just gonna write that out by hand so let me pause this here and get my camera ready. Alright so let's let's just create a little diagram okay here I have circle O I'll call this and I'll just put some points on circle O and we'll call this A, B, C, and D. So here's our proof. Our proof says given that A, B, C, D, quadrilateral A, B, C, D, A, B, C, and D is an inscribed quadrilateral or rather there's an in quadrilateral uh, inscribed sorry that doesn't read very well is a quadrilateral inscribed in circle O. So what we want to prove is we want to prove so we're going to say prove that A and C angle A and angle C are supplementary and also the angle B and angle D are supplementary. Okay? So that these opposite angles are supplementary. So how do we go about proving that? Well, we're going to start by proving the arcs 
Uh, I'm gonna grab them. See if I've got a highlighter here somewhere. Oh boy, I should have had that ready in advance, huh? Okay, here we go. So let's start. Uh oh. Sorry. All right, sorry about that. But my my uh, something fell off of my my desk there. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so let's say now what we're gonna prove is we're gonna prove that B. We're gonna start by stating that B C D and arc B A D and arc B C D make a complete circle. So let's state that number one. Okay, we're gonna state that. B, C, D, and that's arc B, C, D, and arc B, A, D make a complete circle. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the measure of arc B, C, D plus the measure of arc B, A, D equals 360 degrees, right? Because a complete circle has 360 degrees in it. So now we're going to um, next take, uh, let's see, let's take inscribed angles. So let, let's look, um, let's see. Ang the measure of angle A has to be equal to one half of arc B, C, D. So why is that? Um, because angle A is the inscribed angle of arc BCD. So we see this is the arc, so its inscribed angle is the opposite angle, angle A, right? So this angle in here is opposite of that arc. And we know the relationship is, you know, its central angle, if I had done its central angle, would be the same measure as the arc's measure. Its inscribed angle is half. So the measure of angle A is half of the arc BCD. And by the same logic, we could say um, the measure of angle C is equal to one half of arc B A D, right? And that's because it is the inscribed angle for that arc, right? For that arc there, this is the inscribed angle for that arc. Okay? So now let's let's not forget um so, so let's just say the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to, and we're going to just substitute in, what is the measure of angle A? One half of arc B, C, D, plus the measure of angle C was one half of B, A, D, arc B, A, D, right? And that's by substitution, because all we did was we substituted in. Substitution. Okay, so now let's look a little bit closer. Hey, these have a common factor here, so I can say the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to one half, and this is by the law of distribution, right? Or the distribution property, rather, of multiplication. We can say BCD plus arc BAD one half times each of those measures, and that's by the distributive property of multiplication. Hey, we have a common factor. That means we can pull it out and put the remainder inside of parentheses. Well, remember what we said BCD plus arc BAD equals? Right up here, we said that those measures equal 360. So we can now say that measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to one half of 360 degrees. And that is again by substitution. Because we'd already proven 
that these two had to be 360. So now if we multiply what is one half of 360, measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180. That's just simplification. All right, we just simplify there. And then that means that measure of angle A, or I'm sorry, that means that angle A and angle C are supplementary. By the definition, by the definition of supplementary angles. By the definition of supplementary angles, because their measures equal to 180, therefore they are supplementary. That's what we were asked to prove. Now we could do the same exact logic if I had a say a pink over here and a blue over here. We could use the same logic to prove that B and D are both supplementary as well, but this will suffice for our proof here. Okay? We have done what we were asked to do. We've proven that the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are going to be supplementary. And that after we've already seen that they are supplementary. Thanks. Sorry about the commotion from my picture frame falling. Uh, and thanks for hanging in there.